Thank you, so unless I missed it, this time there was no answer on WikiLeaks. <coughs> I mean, all, he, all he said was, I don't know much. Earlier he said he didn't know WikiLeaks. And, you know, he may not know WikiLeaks any more than the rest of us knows WikiLeaks in that WikiLeaks released, released a bunch of stuff. But it, it, it would be hard to forget, but we have recordings. So, here. This just came out. This just came out. WikiLeaks. I love WikiLeaks. I'll tell you, this WikiLeaks stuff is unbelievable. It tells you the inner heart. You got to read it. The WikiLeaks documents show how the media conspires and collaborates with Clinton campaign. Another one came in today. This WikiLeaks is like a treasure trove. Another one came in today. And you know, as I was getting off the plane, they were just announcing new WikiLeaks and I wanted to stay there, but I didn't want to keep you waiting. Boy, I love reading those WikiLeaks. I mean, it, it is what it is. With the news that WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange was arrested in London on a hacking charge filed by US prosecutors, Trump took it upon himself to rewrite history, claiming all of a sudden that he doesn't know a single thing about WikiLeaks. But clearly, during the 2016 presidential campaign, Trump not only knew what WikiLeaks was, but repeatedly celebrated the site for releasing thousands of emails from the DNC and Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman John Podesta to hurt her election prospects. In fact, he cheered on WikiLeaks more than 140 times as the organization worked against Against his opponent. Of course, Trump's ever-changing positions are no surprise. He's never actually stood for anything he believes in and doesn't actually have any long-held positions. He just says whatever fleeting thought is most politically convenient for him at the time. Like how his 2020 budget cut all $18 million in funding for the Special Olympics. But when called out on it, he balked and decided to unilaterally reinstate funding, probably at that very second. I heard about it this morning. I have uh, overridden my people with funding the Special Olympics. The guy used to be pro-choice until he had to pander to evangelicals to get the Republican nomination. I'm, I'm very pro-choice. So the fact that Trump went from praising WikiLeaks so much that it made Eric jealous to pretending that he's never heard of them the second that Assange was arrested should surprise exactly no one. And this isn't the only time that Trump has pretended that he doesn't have any knowledge of someone the moment they land in hot water. He claimed that his own former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, simply came on board very late and was with them for a very short amount of time. He claimed that his former personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, did only low-level work for him, mostly PR. And he called his former foreign policy advisor, George Papadopoulos, a low-level volunteer. The former Trump foreign policy advisor has pleaded guilty to lying to FBI investigators. On Tuesday on Twitter, he was characterized by the president as being a liar and nothing more than a campaign volunteer. But photographs released in March 2016 by Donald Trump's own campaign show Papadopoulos' association was not low level. He's pictured at a national security meeting, seated at the table with then-candidate Trump. This strategy has been tried to death, and I'm not sure who it reflects worse on. Trump for continuously gaslighting the American public with demonstrable lies, or his supporters that he thinks they're buying it. So while he continues trying to sell the American public on whatever fleeting thought pops into his head and is most politically convenient, it's really not a good look that even Fox News is calling him out on his lies.